The global fight over Chinese tennis champion Peng Shuai is intensifying this morning. The International Olympic Committee says it confirmed Peng is safe and well in a second video call with the player who disappeared for three weeks after accusing a top Chinese official of sex abuse. That's not good enough for the women's pro tour and a growing international course of tennis greats. Elizabeth Palmer is following the story from Seoul, South Korea. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning. Yes, the Women's Tennis Association has actually announced that it's going to cancel all the very lucrative tours it had planned to have in China until the Chinese government addresses Peng's allegations of sexual assault. Here's the last time we saw a video of Peng, released by Chinese state media on November 21st. It was supposed to prove she wasn't being punished for her social media posts that accused 75-year-old former Vice Premier Zhang Gaoli of coercing her into sex. But it didn't convince the Women's Tennis Association. In a statement, CEO Steve Simon said, while we now know where Peng is, I have serious doubts that she is free, safe, and not subject to censorship and intimidation. Peng Shuai, three-time Olympian, is a megastar in China, which has a huge and growing appetite for tennis. But the Women's Tennis Association says it has canceled all upcoming tournaments there, a move that will cost it hundreds of millions of dollars until the Chinese government looks into Peng's assault allegations. The biggest stars in tennis, from Naomi Osaka and Serena Williams to Novak Djokovic, are firmly on the WTA's side. I support fully. Uh, WTA's uh, stance because we don't have enough information about Shui Peng and uh, her well-being. But the IOC, which published a picture of its president on a video call with Peng, is pursuing what it's calling quiet diplomacy to deal with the situation. That would probably suit the Chinese government just fine. It's putting finishing touches on sports facilities to stage the Winter Olympics in Beijing in February. Critics say it just wants this scandal to go away. But the IOC shouldn't let that happen. The Olympics is very important to China. Um, the IOC could use that as leverage to facilitate an actual investigation of her allegations. It's chosen not to. It should. Now, the Chinese government has not addressed these allegations directly. And as for the sponsors, conspicuous silence there, too. They are between the rock of this Chinese Me Too moment and the hard place of big, booming profits in the Chinese market. Nate? Oh, Vlad? <laughs> we'll all take it's it. It's all right. We look alike. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all going to take it. And first of all, Liz, we also want to wish you congratulations. You are reporting Congrats. from Seoul, South Korea. You are our new Asia correspondent. You've reported from all over the world. Um, you were one of the first correspondents into Afghanistan after 9-11. Uh, we're so happy. We're so proud of you. Liz, my girl. <laughs> <laughs> so happy for you. Congrats. It's a Congrats, pleasure. Liz. Thank you. Mwah. <laughs> Love you back. Love you back. So this is an important story. As Liz points out, one of the things that's interesting is how women are severely underrepresented within Chinese right. politics. And so this is a real problem for the Communist Party in China. Yeah, and I commend the WTA, you know, for, yes. for standing on what they believe and investigating, doing their due diligence. You know, because oftentimes silence can be compliant with what is going on. And they're saying, no, we need more answers. Yeah, and it feels as if, sorry, Michelle, I was going to say, it feels as if the Chinese government is starting to see big names coming out and talking about this. That creates problems for them. I'm glad she didn't stay silent. That's right. All right, up next.